behind the scenes of Mommy Christ's life. <laughs> Mom life Christ. My name is Tova. I'm a 42-year-old mom from London. I love my life. I love being a mom. But you know what? Sometimes I really wish I could just run away. A few months ago I started this journey. I decided to not wait to do all the things that I always wanted to do. One of the first things on my list was going to Nepal and doing the Everest Base Camp Trek, which is a trek I went on 20 years ago when I was 23 with my then boyfriend and I never got to complete because a few days into the trek he got very ill so we had to come down from the mountain and I was really gutted about that. The thing that I remember the most is the silence. When do we ever get to have that quiet? There is chaos and noise all around me, whether it's my kids or my kids were. And that was one of the things that I remember the most from the trek, is how peaceful and serene and quiet it was. I decided to ask my brother if he wanted to go with me. When we were little, me and my brother were very close. But you know what it's like when you grow up, we don't even live in the same country. And I just thought to myself, what an amazing opportunity. And he said, yes. I am so scared of this trip. I question whether I'm being too selfish in doing the thing I should have done in my 20s. You know, is it okay to do it in your 40s? What are you doing, guys? They're making a sign, it's mm -hmm. like a big flag, for when I reach Everest Base Camp. Nice. We can hang it, right? What's yeah. it say? Girl power. Girl power. Wow. We're going to be climbing to 5,500 meters all the way up to base camp, which is where professional climbers start their climb to Mount Everest. We'll be sleeping in little villages along the way, and it's, I think, minus 15 degrees at the moment. I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited, and I can't wait. I just spoke to my brother, and he... Oh, my God. He just told me that the airport we're supposed to be flying to from Kathmandu, Lokla, is the most dangerous airport in the world. Like, the most dangerous airport in the world. I mean, even if you weren't afraid of flights, that would freak you out. And for somebody who is afraid of flying... I, it's, it's like, it's, I, I, I can't, I don't even know how to handle this right now. Just freaking out. Uh, I know this is totally ridiculous. I'm just so scared. Um, God, of leaving the kids for so long. I've never left them for this long. I'm just, I'm scared. Something will happen to them. I'm scared something will happen to me. I'm scared. Um, I'm scared of just not being with them for three weeks and how I'm going to miss them and just not seeing them for so long. I know it sounds stupid. And then on the other hand, you know, I, I want them to see that I have my own life that... You know, I do stuff that I love doing. And they're so excited for me, you know. And I feel like I'm a bad mom, you know, for wanting to do something like this for myself. I feel selfish. I feel that if I die, I'm selfish. <laughs> you can die. You think? Yeah, I know. Really? Wait, but how do you know? The girls have made me these bracelets to take with me so I can put them on and just have them with me. The last few days have been running around like crazy, trying to plan as many things as I can for while I'm away. So I've arranged play dates for the girls. It's such a mom thing to do, you know, <laughs> to try and control everything from like, you know, the other side of the world. The thing is that I know that they're going to be fine. I guess it's it's for me. It's not really for them, you know? Whew. Here we go. 
So the plan is I fly to Istanbul by myself and that's where I'm going to meet my brother. In Istanbul we will be catching a flight together to Kathmandu and then the following day we catch another flight to a place called Lokla which is where you start your trek. I am not a calm flyer. I don't like flying and I definitely do not like flying alone. So that's going to be a real challenge for me. So I'm literally standing by the gate now, waiting for my brother's flight to land. Run, run! Kathmandu passengers, run! <laughs> run, Boris! We're heading to the gate now. Oh my god. And look, Ten we're in one of these go. like funny cars. <laughs> this is amazing! <laughs> It's been a very dramatic start to the trip, <laughs> but we are here now. It's really nice to be back in Kathmandu. Welcome! And it's really nice to be here with my brother. Weirdly, things don't look like I remember them from when I was here 20 years ago, which is kind of odd. I remember it being really chaotic and lots of people and the noise, and that's still there. We have a very, very early flight to catch tomorrow to Lokla. That's a flight that I'm really not looking forward to. <laughs> First flight leaves at 6 a.m. And yeah, start bright and early. <laughs> and hopefully no surprises this time. Hopefully. <laughs> this is like shock therapy <laughs> for somebody who does not like to fly. Lokla Airport, it's a tiny little airport that's on a mountain. The end of the runway is like a cliff. <laughs> so if you don't stop in time, you basically go down the cliff. It's not fun, let's just put it that way. First day of the track started bright and early. This today is our first day, like three hours walking, crossing the Sustainable Sea Bridge. Crossing today, wow. Yeah. Wow. First day trek is pretty easy. It's mainly downhill. You actually go down in height, about 300 meters. Of course, we stopped along the way to have a drink and have breakfast, etc. And we've come across an Irish pub. <laughs> when I was here, 98, there was nothing here. Now, there are so many people doing this trek, all ages. We checked into our first hotel, and I was expecting to sleep on the floor because that's what we did back then. But they have beds, and we actually have a shower and a toilet in our bedroom, which is just insane. I managed to speak to my girls this morning and Mike, oh God, Ella, which was amazing. And although saying goodbye to them was very hard, and for them it was really hard, and the next day when they rang me they cried, the following day and today they were like really happy. I think they're really proud of me, and I think they're really excited that I'm having fun. I'm just about to go to bed. <laughs> I just want to point out I'm wearing four layers in a sleeping bag with my hat and a Day two. We've been walking for nearly seven hours uphill. And I did not remember this being so hard. It's either 20 years really did make a difference or I've got a really bad memory. I mean, either way, wow. Every time you go around a curb and you see another steep hill, you just want to go, I can't do this. 
We crossed many bridges, like physical bridges, not metaphorical bridges, that are so scary above beautiful, beautiful river waterfalls, extraordinary, but they are so freaking scary. Every time you do something like that, you just go, oh my God, like I actually might die right now. We bumped into somebody on the trail who, who died, possibly a heart attack, but nobody really knows for sure. He must have been walking about 10 minutes ahead of us. We saw him leaving the same village we were staying at the night before. Um, and then when we caught up with him on the trail, um, he was lying on the ground. People were trying to resuscitate him. This whole trip is just another, it's like a constant reminder of how fragile life is and just how, you know, we gotta live it to the fullest, enjoy it as much as we can. And you never know, you just really, really, really never know. It's weird because that's kind of what started this whole thing and I'm getting constant reminders of it along the way. Okay, so about a month ago, somebody contacted me and asked me to hang these flags up for her husband who is ill, he's got cancer, and these flags are good luck and prayers. So uh, this one is for you. We're just about to uh, hang them on one of the most stunning bridges and the stunning views I've ever seen in my life. So I hope this brings you good luck. to show you this shower. It is the funniest shower I've ever seen in my life. Hang on. So basically it's a gas shower and you put the water on here, right? The temperature is here and in order for it to get hotter, you need to adjust it from the uranium. <laughs> Hi sweeties. Hello. I, I miss you loads. So what are you saying? We're the slowest people you've ever had? No, I had last my last trip. She was like above sixty. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the slowest after the sixty-year-old woman. I just want to establish that. Yeah. I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So it is nighttime now. We had a really good day today. We trekked up to the Everest View Hotel, which is one of the highest hotels in the world. And here are some yaks. <laughs> and had an amazing view of Mount Everest. We were actually walking, came across the corner, and there it was. I don't know if we're filming or not, but <laughs> behind us is Mount Everest. Can you guys see it? I don't know I can see it. Yeah, it's that, no, it's that one. Ah, uh, they all look the same. <laughs> this one? Yes. Wow. Both me and my brother have had altitude sickness symptoms. He's had headaches and I have had swollen fingers. So we both have started taking the altitude sickness tablets, which weirdly have side effects as well. So my fingers are now tingly and feel numb. It's annoying because actually, apart from that, I feel really good. Okay, we started the fourth day. It's a very cold day. <laughs> it is. Lots of you can fog. See very high altitude. <laughs> very high altitude. It was a rough night. I have two hot water bottles in my sleeping bag and a blanket on top. <laughs> we have loads of symptoms. <laughs> Karen is telling us, pace yourself. Karen's very worried. But I uh, told him, Karen, come on, don't be worried. <laughs> We've been climbing for what seems like 17 hours, yeah. really an hour and a half <laughs> and now it's starting to rain. Yay. Oh, there's a yak. What? <laughs> the yak. <laughs> Don't go there. Just arrived at Dambuche. There is a really beautiful Tibetan monastery. So beautiful, huh? It's 
gorgeous. To be honest, we didn't think we were going to make it, did we? No, we, we had a bit of a crisis after lunch. Uh, nearly turned back. But I'm so proud that we're here, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Before we started this um, journey, we kept saying to each other that, you know, 60,000 people a year do this to encourage each other that this isn't completely crazy. But it suddenly dawned on me today that only 60,000 yeah. people a year do this thing. And also, I have to say, I'm so proud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I already feel like it's such an yeah. achievement. Yeah, the trip itself, the way, it's amazing. And now I think we're just going to go and have a nice hot chocolate. <laughs> I'm just happy that we made it, you know? I'm missing my kids terribly. And altitude sickness is a bitch. Hi! The thing I find most interesting about the trek is how every time you overcome something and you think that's it, you know, something else happens. So we've just arrived at our tea house where we're supposed to stay the night and they don't have any rooms left we have to walk another 30 minutes to get to the next village to find a place to stay tonight oh my god and it's literally getting dark I'm basically walking pitch dark I want to live don't worry you will live you will live for a hundred years <laughs> but really, 7.30 we're going to be? No, let's be right now. 7.30 we watch with you. Every day we say that. Let's, let's give a real hour. <laughs> Every day we leave at 9. Let's say, out the door, we're yes. out the door. Yeah. 8. Okay. It's possible? It's <laughs> possible. <laughs> We've just had some really bad news. Apparently somebody from a neighbor lodge passed away today. Um, they were having really severe altitude sickness and they were on oxygen. I don't know exactly what happened, but they couldn't be saved and it's just horrendous. I can't even tell you like how... It's just so upsetting and it's so scary and I just don't... So, we've basically made a decision um, to head back tomorrow. I feel like I've had enough excitement, fear, and risk to last me a lifetime. Yeah, it's the second person that has actually passed away on the trek, and it's weird how we were always like right next to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The like first the first guy actually saw him. Saw him like literally ten minutes after he collapsed, and I just feel like I don't want to. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't come here to prove anything. I came here for me. And I really want to go back in one piece to see my girl. Safety comes first. Yeah. You know? And we did so much. Yeah. The goal is not getting to the summit, but is actually getting back safely. Yeah. Something that some climbers uh, forget. forget on the way. Um, but yeah, I think we've climbed enough. Yeah, we've climbed enough. hiding in a little nook because there's so many donkeys trying to get up this mountain <laughs> we just hung our flags from home that our kids made for us you know we couldn't really put them up on base camp because we didn't make it up to base camp but we've just hung them on one of the biggest bridges we passed so there you go girls girl power just entered Lukla, the last village of the trek. And tomorrow catching a flight to Kathmandu. I think we should head to the Irish pub now. Have a nice hot whiskey. Ooh, that sounds nice. 
I think I should shower though. <laughs> I haven't showered in like four days. <laughs> we were very lucky we had you. Yeah. You were super great and we we enjoyed it very much because of you. Thank you. And this we are also really happy because you guys are really amazing and interesting. You know, it was a great time we had it. It was fun. And we'll uh, say so let's fail another goal together. <laughs> We're heading home tomorrow. I'm super excited to get home, to see my daughters, to see my husband. But I have really enjoyed the time that I spent with my brother. And I have to say that when we were coming down the mountain, it's almost like I enjoyed that more because I was calm. You know, there was no pressure. It was just enjoying the moment, which I really don't think I do enough in my real life. Um, in my real life. <laughs> I know that as moms, it's very rare that we allow ourselves to take time to do anything that is not related to our kids or our families, but I'm so glad I did this, you know? I can't wait to be able to tell my daughters and my husband all the adventures we had, all the stories, all the laughs. This is something that me and my brother are gonna have forever, you know? And yeah, <laughs> it's just so surreal. I'm just like, I'm happy to go home. I'm also a bit sad that it's over. Wow. <laughs> anyway, till the next time. <laughs>